Hello people, in this video let us look at induction of labor. What do you mean by induction of labor? So basically you will initiate the uterine contractions. Initiate, okay, that is the word here. Induction of labor, you will initiate the contractions of the uterus, okay, for the purpose of vaginal delivery. Uh, and what is the uh, difference between induction and augmentation? Augmentation means the contractions are there but it is not sufficient. Then you will augment it. So the difference you should understand. Initiate, uh, sorry, induction means what? Initiation. That means you are starting it. Okay. Augmentation means the contractions are present and then you are going to increase the frequency, intensity, etc. That will become augmentation. So what are we looking at in this video? In this video we are looking at induction of labor. Very good. So why are you indica uh, doing induction? So basically you want to stop this pregnancy, right? Uh, either uh, it is uh, risky for the mother or the baby, right? Then you want to induct, uh, do induction. Also they do induction when the fetus is dead inside, right? At that time also they will do an induction. They want to deliver the fetus. Okay guys, so what are some things that you want to take care of before you induce a woman? Basically, you should check for lung maturity of the fetus. Very good. So what are the problems of doing uh, this type of induction? That also I should explain to patient. So basically, there can be a premature delivery, right? There could be um, a failed induction. So you may have to again go for cesarean, right? So the whole point of vaginal delivery, you may have to stop that and you'll have to give a cesarean for the person. Anyways, now let us look at the indications of induction of labor. Look at this uh, table here. Let us look at the indications for induction of labor. So why will you induce, uh, why will you do induction of labor that is IOL. IOL what and all you will get ideas right when you say IOL, intraocular lens and all that. But anyways IOL is what induction of labor. So basically if a person has preeclampsia, eclampsia, you can understand the person, the person is having hypertension. So hypertension is after that she will go into seizures, seizures is eclampsia. So you have tried everything, labetalol, magnesium sulfate, uh, nifidipine, everything you tried, nothing is working. Then finally they will want to induce labor and end the pregnancy. Maternal uh, medical complications. Now she has diabetes mellitus, she has renal disease, she has cholestasis of pregnancy. What happens in this? This is... Uh, uh, the bile levels will be more, isn't it? This is more like uh, obstructive jaundice, isn't it? So here this could be a problem for the uh, fetus, isn't it? Uh, so they want to end the pregnancy. So they will induce the labor. Post-maturity, that is, uh, you have waited for all the uh, estimated delivery date, etc. But the delivery has not happened. So it is post-maturity. So that is interesting, right? That is very easy for you to understand. The uh, post-maturity. Right, preterm, term, post term, isn't it? Post term or post maturity, how are they calling it? Then, abrupt show placenta. Remember, the placenta has uh, is, uh, is separated. So, here you can see the placenta is detached from the uterus partially or fully. So, basically, this is another condition where you will induce the labor and get the baby out soon. Continuing people, um, intrauterine growth restriction. So, the baby is not growing well inside the uterus. So, what do you want to do? It is not getting enough of whatever it needs. Then RH isoimmunization, what happens in this case? The fetus can go into, uh, what is that, uh, high drops etc. right? So RH isoimmunization where the fetus can have a problem, right? Premature rupture of membranes. So basically it's RH isoimmunization is when the mother is RH negative and the baby is RH positive. Uh, in fact here the problem is for the positive person. Right, uh, that is the fetus. Premature rupture of membranes. So, if the membranes are ruptured prematurely, there can be a risk of infection, etc. So, they are inducing the labor. Fetus with major congenital anomaly. So, what do they want to do? They want to work on the fetus. Then, intrauterine death of the fetus. Yeah, this is what we, if the fetus has passed away inside the uterus, which is really sad. Uh, in those cases, they prefer vaginal birth because uh, anyways, the fetus is not there and uh, they, they they can get it out, right? So the risks of normal vaginal uh, delivery won't be there, right? So they will prefer a vaginal birth for a intrauterine death. So in this case, what will happen? The fetus is dead. You don't have to worry about a breach or malpresentation or mal uh, position or uh, forceps or vacuum or... You don't have to worry that much, isn't it, about the fetus. So they are going for a vaginal delivery. Uh, then, oligohydramnios and polyhydramnios. Less amniotic fluid, more amniotic fluid and all these conditions, they are doing an induction of labor. Right? Unstable lie after correction in longitudinal lie. So basically the lie, lie means what and all transverse lie. You have longitudinal lie. So many lies you have. So this lie is unstable. 
that you have corrected it into a longitudinal line you have corrected it then you will induce the labor and get it out that's what it sounds like so what are the common indications for induction of labor now let us look at what the common indications are for induction of labor post maturity is most common so you have to remember this so you want to induce somebody because they have uh, exceeded the ex uh, delivery date looks like uh, pre eclampsia eclampsia is the second one then uh, intrauterine fetal death right premature rupture of membranes congenital malformation of the fetus antepartum hemorrhage this could be because of placenta uh, abruptio placenta is it because that is one of the indications of induction of labor chronic hydramnios that is uh, uh what is hydramnios this is like more amniotic fluid so guys remember if it is a placenta previa and the two are central one it is an indication for cesarean but if it is abruptio placenta they are talking about induction of labor they are talking about vaginal delivery in this case okay so remember if it is um, abruptio placenta is a indication for induction of labor however placenta previa especially the central one central one is an indication for cesarean section and uh, placenta previa as such is an indication for a uh, relative indication for cesarean so remember abruptio induction of labor placenta previa cesarean we have to then looked at, at the contraindications of induction of labor when you will not induce the person okay after this there's a lot guys uh, exactly what parameters you'll assess for before induction uh, how will you induce medical surgical so many ways are there everything you'll have to look at okay now let us look at why when you will not induce labor especially if there is uh, you don't want a vaginal birth when is all that when you have a contracted pelvis when you, when you have a cephalopelvic disproportion it is not possible for the fetal head to come out of that uh, type of pelvis at all maternal pelvis is not going to allow the fetal head to this, uh, come out mal presentation if it is a breach or a transverse or an oblique lie would you want uh, a vaginal uh, delivery that to uh, you are inducing one no then if there is a previous classical cesarean section see it is not a cesarean section that they are saying lsc is they saying if it was a classical cesarean section and if there was a hysterotomy hysterotomy means what uh, basically you have removed the fetus before 28 weeks isn't it from the uh, uterus you made a ut uterine incision and removed the baby before 28 weeks that is hysterotomy right so if you have done all this then uh, do not induce labor in these people so classical etc uh, can rupture is it then utero placental factors guys are you focusing we are looking at when not to induce that uh, lady okay so remember so you will not in induce if she ha her pelvis is not Uh, uh you know if it is a contracted pelvis if there's a cephalopelvic disproportion if there's a mal presentation right uh, of the baby or if there was a previous classical cesarean section or a hysterotomy uh, if there was a uh, if there are some utero placental factors like unexplained vaginal bleeding vasa previa vasa previa is where the the uh, blood vessels of the umbilical cord is it the baby can go through them you should not do that you should not induce uh, no, a vaginal delivery in that case right placenta previa we already told you this is a indication for cesarean active genital herpes infection do you want the baby to come out through the herpes uh, infection no high risk pregnancy with fetal compromise so do you want in a high risk pregnancy to induce labor because it is a high risk pregnancy means what it is high risk either to the mother or the fetal life then heart disease mother has heart disease can she uh, undergo normal labor pelvic tumor so pelvic tumor etc are uh, things are that are indications for cesarean so you definitely will not do that here elderly primary gravida elderly primary gravida these people actually they'll have rigid perineum and they will do episiotomy i remember but if there are medical complications or obstetric complications then they are saying do not induce labor umbilical cord prolapse come on the umbilical cord has come out that means any time it can uh, become constricted and there can be less blood flow to the baby fetus so in these cases you will not induce labor you'll have to go for cesarean cervical carcinoma we already told you in advanced cases what's the indication in advanced cases it's the indication is cesarean so you will not induce labor in this people in this video you have looked at the indications for um, uh, induction of labor let us revise indications for induction of labor are uh, if you go for the common ones what are they guys commonly it is because of post maturity pre eclampsia eclampsia intrauterine fetal death premature rupture of membranes 
PROM is a premature rupture of membranes, congenital malformation of the fetus, antepartum hemorrhage, chronic hydramnios. These at least this much you should know. Antepartum hemorrhage, chronic hydramnios. Can you recollect a few more, guys? Come on. Okay, look at the indications. Preeclampsia, eclampsia, maternal uh, medical complications like diabetes. Uh, there could be more shoulder dystocia, is it? Because the shoulder, the fat is not properly deposited in the baby. Chronic renal disease, cholestasis of pregnancy. It is a uh, the baby can be in distress, right? Um, post maturity, abruptio placite again. That is uh, indicating the antepartum hemorrhage. Intrauterine growth restriction, RH isoimmunization, the fetal uh, fetal distress can be there, isn't it? Premature rupture of membranes, fetal as with major congenital anomaly, intrauterine death of the fetus, this we already told you, oligohydramnios, polyhydramnios, that is hydramnios, more water. Hydramnios means polyone, is it? Unstable lie after correction into longitudinal lie. Okay, now let us come this side and look at the contraindications. Focus guys, we are moving to the contraindications of induction of labor. You will not induce labor in anything that is, in, uh, is uh, uh, actually an indication for cesarean, as simple as that. Pelvic tumor. Okay, then. Pla uh, previous classical cesarean section. Breach, etc. Transverse lie, oblique lie. Cephalopelvic disproportion, contracted pelvis, very good. If there is herpes, would uh, have the suggested cesarean? I don't remember that. Then coming to umbilical cord prolapse, definitely you will do a cesarean. Cervical carcinoma, they said advanced, okay. Then what else? Don't forget placenta previa. Placenta previa is a, one, a central one. is actually an absolute indication for um, a cesarean section. Vasa previa, please add that, okay, where the vessels of the umbilical cord are uh, in the way for the fetus to get out, isn't it? Uh, unexplained vaginal ble bleeding. So this could be because of a lot of reasons. Uh, placenta previa vasa previa etc then what else have we left out here high risk pregnancy elderly primary gravida heart disease okay all this you have to write guys uh, in these cases basically you do not want a vaginal birth that's what i'm thinking right those are the indications for non uh, not uh, in uh, those are the contraindications for induction of labor a long way to go guys we told you you'll have to assess the uh, some things some parameters you'll have to assess before inducing labor how do you induce labor medically surgically so many ways are there right so guys you have medical induction of labor surgical induction of labor combined induction of labor medically you will use prostaglandins oxytocin mifeprestone right you should know those surgically uh, when will you induce uh, basically you can do artificial rupture of membranes stripping of membranes all these are the methods Combined also you can do where you combine medical and surgical. For each of these there are indications. When will you do medical? When will you do surgical? Right? And then the dangers of uh, induction of labor. So many things are there to look at guys. Dangers of induction of labor also you have to look at. Okay, the dangers of induction of labor. Look at these. Maternal, she may be upset. Okay, if there is an induction failure after all this and then you have to do a cesarean section. Just imagine you tried all the way to push the baby or uh, till what level for a vaginal delivery and then cesarean is still going to be done so uh, that is going to be really upsetting for the mother then prolonged labor she can go into a prolonged labor because of abnormal uterine action she may need increased analgesia during labor because um, she may need more painkillers okay because you have induced the labor increased operative interference so there could be a cesarean that is also an operative interference isn't it increased morbidity so the morbidity uh, increases so what morbidity means diseases any conditions so they all the chances of them becoming uh, the morbidity chances are more okay now fetal what happens to the fetus if you do in uh, if you induce labor there can be prematurity did you even check that uh, there is maturity or not yet so the baby can be born prematurely Unless you are doing it for post maturity, isn't it? Um, hypoxia due to uterine dysfunction. So, because of the uterus working in such a dysfunctional way, there can be hypoxia for the baby. Baby definitely doesn't like hypoxia. Prolonged labor. So, you're writing that for mother and the baby. Nobody wants a prolonged labor. Neither the mother nor the fetus. And operative interference. Who wants to be operated upon? Look at what and all operations can be done in obstetrics. Not that it's relevant here, but look at this. Vacuum aspiration, Ventos, that is also vacuum something, forceps delivery, operative vaginal delivery, 
then so many things that can be done and finally cesarean section which can be lower segment mostly then so there are a lot of operative obstetrics so nobody wants that isn't it so what are the dangers of uh, induction of labor uh, labor can you say that uh, come on say for maternal uh, prolonged labor for both of the uh, mother and baby i understand baby will have hypoxia okay see we are not looking at the screen we are trying to say without looking at the screen okay let's see for the mother prolonged labor uh, for baby also prolonged labor for mother she is upset that after doing so much she has to go into cesarean okay cesarean she doesn't like then baby hypoxia baby doesn't like hypoxia baby also doesn't like prolonged labor baby doesn't like being operated upon okay then one more thing for baby only three things i told for baby one more prematurity right and then she will need more analgesia she will have more morbidity mother can suffer morbidity okay so these are the dangers of induction of labor so in this video you have understood induction of labor the indications the contraindications the dangers of indications of labor in the next video we will take up the mechanism medical surgical combined etc okay bye bye